Hi there, it's Jill Hill here of Jill Hill Edits. I'm here for another writer's bookshelf. It's December here in Idaho. It's kind of cold and everybody in my house is feeling under the weather. So the boys are at school, fingers crossed for a little longer. Um, and I'm going to tell you about a recent book that I read that I really enjoyed and would highly recommend. It's called Eat the Elephant, How to Write and Finish Your Book One Bite at a Time. And it's by Jen Crosswhite. Um, so I have to say that I was given an advanced reader copy of this just because I followed Jen, um, uh, but I was not given any um, anything in return for providing a review. Um, so I was happy to read the book and I was delighted to read the book. It's, it's a bit of a whopper, it's a long one, and it covers almost everything to do with writing, which sometimes I can find a little overwhelming. And if you're a new writer, can sometimes feel a little overwhelming because all the advice pretty much that you could need to write um, a book is in there. Um, and that can be a good thing because you can find pretty much anything you need in there. But it also means that if you're starting out, you're not quite sure what you're going to do. It can feel a little much reading it. However, I did really like that she broke it down into steps that the, you're writing a book when you're not used to it. It feels like a giant elephant sitting on your plate and you have to try and figure out a way how you're going to eat it. And what she suggests is one bite at a time, which absolutely makes sense. So she goes through a variety of different areas and discusses how to um, how to deal with them. And then also gives you some practical tips um, and an exercise to try um, to make use of what she's describing. And I really like that aspect, especially for newer writers or for someone who's written but is now learning something new about character development or themers or whatever, then applying some of her exercises, especially if you have written something already, can be really helpful. Um, I like that she gives examples from fiction and from common stories that we've heard before, uh, like Star Wars, for example, is a classic one. Um, one of the problems with using um, famous stories is that we don't always know what the author meant when they wrote them. Um, they're really, everybody unknows the story, so it's really easy to explain it to somebody and to give an example from it. But we don't exactly know if that's what the author meant when they wrote it. Um, and we have to extrapolate out from that. So what I like is that Jen uses famous stories where almost everyone reading the book will identify with the where in the story she's drawing out her example but she also uses examples for from her own book that she wrote and because she peppers examples from her own book all the way through eat the elephant you start to get a feel for what's happening in her story and so it's a little easier to kind of even if you haven't read it to guess where the story's going or to understand what she's talking about um, but she knows exactly what she meant as she wrote it. And so there's a real there's real usefulness there to her giving examples from her own writing. Um, and I like that almost always an example given from her book that you probably haven't read is paired with an example from a more um, famous story, which you will have watched as a movie or read as a book. And so using the two together allows you to get one, a good feel for what she's talking about from a story you do know, and then second, an example from something you maybe don't know, but you can probably guess, especially when you've just read about the famous example. And then she can really dig into what she meant and how she wrote it. Um, so she covers all kind of areas which are, I think are really useful, starting from outlining and thinking about your theme, but then also working all through character development and thinking about the different sections, part one, part two, part three of your book, and getting into details of exactly how to plot and write those. Um, I love, for example, with character that what she talks about is you, you can write a, a list of character um, information about your characters you can really get to know them what color is their hair what color are their eyes things like that I always find these a little annoying because I don't you could get into great detail about that to really see your cla your um, character in your head but it's not really going to help you when it comes to writing parts of your story down and when you get stuck and the reason is that the important thing about your character is not the color of their hair but how they react under pressure and their backstory is important in relation to how it affects the story that they're in today as you read it. So where they went to school is not necessarily relevant. Um, 
unless it's Jane Eyre, for example, and then understanding what happened to her when she was at school and how that's influenced her and how she then became the person she is at a later stage when she goes off to work as a governess does influence, um, make a huge difference to the actions she takes when she's under pressure. Um, knowing what colour somebody's hair is doesn't really affect the character in the book. However, knowing that maybe they were abused as a child and their father cut their hair off and now they have grown their hair long, that would be very important to the story. And so knowing things just for the sake of knowing them is not useful, but knowing, understanding how they apply to the story is useful. And I think that um, Jen Crosswhite does a great job of explaining that what you need to understand about your character is the things that affect how your character acts today on the page in their story under the pressure of the conflict that you're putting them in. So I loved her description of character and how to go about that. Um, I thought her description of outlining of what part one, part two, and then the, the big kind of, and part three obviously, and the big milestones that are involved in a book, um, the plot points. Um, I really liked, she used a very similar terminology um, and description to K.M. Wyland, who I really love reading her stuff and I have all her books. Um, and I feel like with any book that describes writing, it's always really just about does it work for you? Can you make the link? Yes, that makes sense to me as I read it. Because almost all books are correct, but some will engage you better than others and your style of learning. So for me, the way K.M. Wyland describes it works fantastically and that makes sense to my brain. Um, and so if you're a fan of any of her stuff, you're going to like Eat the Elephant as well, because I feel like Jen Crosswhite describes it in a very similar way. Um, so I would highly recommend that you check out Eat the Elephant um, on Amazon or on any other books, independent bookstores that you like to go see or check it out from your library if you want. If you are a new author, I would suggest maybe read the book through with the idea that you have of what you want to write, but don't worry about getting into detail because it might feel really overwhelming on the first read. And then um, as you are drafting, as you're starting to outline and really get into the detail of your book, go back into separate chapters that are relevant to the section you're at um, and try applying the exercises that Jen Crosswhite gives and see if they are useful to you. Um, if you are a more experienced writer, you've maybe finished novels already, um, or you are like a good way through drafting and you feel pretty comfortable or you've written short stories but you're looking to move up into writing a novel this book is still really great there's a lot to dig into there and I feel like it, it's like the layers of an onion the first time you read it there's a lot you get from the surface but as you go back into each chapter you'll find more and more so I would say if you're in the middle of writing or drafting as a more experienced author I would also go and check out her chapters and eat the elephant and maybe apply some of the exercises and see what you get from from it because I found value in the exercises she suggested um, as a more experienced author and editor. Um, so that is the writer's bookshelf for today. Thank you very much.